and welcome back to practicalstudent.com. This is part number four, the cab for the 2015 Ordinary Level Project. Much like the previous uh, part number three, the body, it looks more complicated than it actually is and if we break it up into sections it isn't so bad. Just like in the previous one, I added up using a calculator some of the dimensions to get totals from the left hand corner here. Uh, these ones are pretty straightforward. This section here is 6. 6 by 45 means that it's 6 this way and 6 this way. So the 22 added to that gave me 28 to here, 70, 130 and 172. The top ones were a little bit more complicated. I had to look at this line and then go back 8.5. So it was 28 minus 8.5 which gave me 19.5. And I worked out my dimensions from different lines. So these three here were worked out from this one, the 28. Uh, these two here then were worked out from the 70 and I hope you saw in the last one that, that can help at times especially when drawings are complicated and hopefully we'll see the benefit of it here again. So let's get to marking it out. Alright so here's my piece it's long enough and high enough and this bottom left hand corner I've checked already is square with a t-square and the edges are smooth. So I'm going to start in the bottom left hand corner and I'm going to identify this first section here which is 28 across I'm actually going to identify all of these different sections so 28 70 130 and 172 Uh, the 172, the 130, the 70 and the 28 are all bend lines so I'm going to dash those as opposed to the normal straight line Okay, so we're going to deal with, uh, sorry, the next thing we need to do now is to do the centre line and the top of the piece. Now my T-square won't reach the whole way across, so I'm going to have to use an alternative method of just using the ruler. So I'm going to measure up 33 and 33, which is a total of 66 here. And I'm going to do the same thing down on the last line because I know that one is perpendicular as opposed to the edge. I'm going to use my ruler now to draw those lines the whole length of the piece. Right, so everything above this line is waste all the way across and we'll cut that off with the guillotine to save us having to do any filing later on. We don't know what's waste down at this end yet because we need to do a curve here but we'll see that later on. So this section here, the two little chamfers at the end are 6 by 45. That means from this corner it's 6 that way and 6 that way. So I'm going to measure over 6 from the bottom left hand corner transfer that measurement to the other side measure 6 millimeters 
up from the corner. And six millimeters down from the line that we drew at 66. I'm going to join where the edge here and that section with the line here. Again, they can be cut off with the guillotine, that may not be very obvious. The line. Again, set having to save file. So that's that little bit done. We have two holes here and they're at 19.5. I got that by adding 6 to 22, which gave me this line here, and subtracting 8.5. So 19.5 from the left edge. See square line up. And we're told here it's 12 either side of the center line. I'm going to center punch those as we're going to be drilling them later on. Right, so that's most of this first section done here. We're not going to worry about this line here at this stage. We now want to go into the next section and get these. These quarter circles, we're not actually going to draw these circles and we're not going to draw this outline currently. What we want to do is identify the four hole corners. And we're going to drill with an eight millimeter drill bit there and that'll cut out that curve. We then come back later on and draw the tangents to all of them. So I suppose you won't see the fully drawn uh, sketch until after drilling. Okay, so how do we get these? Well, we want the center line here and here, and that gives us these two as well. So the measurement to this one is 32 from the left edge and 50 for this one. So from the left edge, I'm going to measure 32 and I'm going to mark 50. T square those lines both up. told here that the center lines in both of the windows are 16 millimeters from the center. So I'm actually going to measure 16 either side here and down uh, here somewhere. Doesn't matter where once we can get a long enough line. The longer the better in actual fact. You're less likely to be off. And we're going to draw lines between those points. So here we have the four windows. For this window we have the four holes here. I'm actually just going to extend this one a little bit. It's slightly short the line. I'm going to punch the four of those. And we'll be drilling those, remember, eight millimeters with an eight millimeter drill bit. It tells you here on the drawing that there are four, radius four by four for these and radius four by four for these. So radius four is an eight millimeter drill bit. We have these two holes to do here. I really should have done that line the whole way. So I'm just going to fix that up now. And 
the holes are five millimeters from the edge of the line. That's easy enough to do. There's five from that edge. And then five from this line here. I'm going to punch both of those as well. So that's the second section done here. Now we have this section to do. We're told in the measurements that from this line it's 26 up to the centres here and then another 18 to the centres here and that gives us 96 and 114 from the bottom left corner. So 96 and 114. T square those across. And all we have to do is cut these two lines. And there we go, we have the centers for those four holes. Again, punching all four. And we have one last bit to do. We have this curve at the end to do. We're told it's radius 72 from here. Now we don't have that point yet, but because these are radius four, that means the distance here is four. So that distance is four. So I'm going to measure 114 plus four, which is 118 from the end. I'm going to punch that point. going to set 72 on my dividers. So I want to start at 10. 10 plus 72 is 82. And from here we draw the curve. And that's it, our part is marked out. Um, now, the la next thing we're going to do is drilling holes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these four holes here are all 3.5s. I'm actually going to drill these ones 3.5s as well, and then drill them with the 8. The 3.5 initially acts as a pilot hole. After that, uh, this is waste as well up here. After that, use the shears to cut off this section, this section, and this section. Use the bandsaw to cut around here and then file that down. And then we get to the bending, and the bending is quite involved. So on to drilling. So now if you remember we said we were going to drill the holes and then do the outline of the windows as tangents around both sections. So I'm just going to do that now. You could use a T-square here, which would be fine as well. Um, ruler works quite well. Do that line again. Just make sure that the, the ruler touches the edge of the surface. 
Now if your circles are slightly off, that's okay, it's not a huge thing. And you will be able to fix it when you're filing. You should be able to line up all four there. And this line here is a bend line and it's already there so we don't have to worry about that. And there we go, we now have the outline of the window. So I'm going to cut out these now with a piercing saw. So when working with a piercing saw, just make sure that you have you take it nice and easy and have good tension on the blade and it'll work quite well. So just about to file this part now, it's not, it'll take a bit of time because of the inside here and the little curve here, but everything else is already done so it's not too bad. The files I'm going to be using are a large smooth file, flat file, a rough and a smooth small flat file, that'll get me in here into the, those sections no problem. And if I need a smooth round file just to tidy up corners and things like that. I'm also going to be using for the first bit here, because it's so tall, I'm going to use a couple of pieces of wood just to clamp and support the piece of metal a little bit better. So it's just more of the same, 
uh, for the next two sections. So I'm not going to do that on camera. I'll do it off camera and show you the finished result at the end. So that's the piece finished. Um, finished in terms of uh, filing, etc. So now it's on to bending and getting that sorted. So the angle we need to set up here is an, we want to bend our piece to an angle of 100 degrees and we have a bit of an issue. Can't use the angle cube in its usual position up on top here um, because it goes past 90 degrees and the angle cube then gets stuck to this part. So what we can do is we can use the fact that the front of the bending machine is at 90 degrees vertically down. So we can then move the part around until we get to 10 degrees and that will give us a total of 100 degrees movement for this section. So I'm going to bring this around now. And you can see there now we're just over the, the 10 degrees. Um, we can nudge that just a little bit to try and get it a bit more accurate and then lock it in place. I think, that, I think I'll stick with that. I'll be happy enough with that. But as you can see, that's 10 degrees. This section here, the bending surface, has moved a total of 100 degrees from when it was flat. True 90, 10 more, gives you a total of 100 degrees, so we can bend our piece at that angle. So this is a bit of an awkward piece to bend. We have one, two, three, four, four bends to do. Uh, these, if it was only these three here, it would be quite simple, but this one adds in an added complication. First of all, as you've just seen me set up, it's set up to um, 100 degrees, and it's bending the opposite direction to the other one. So we're going to do that one first. Um, I've transferred the line that I had marked here over to the other side because we're bending it the opposite direction. So that's the first bend done and you can see it's gone past 90 degrees and it's bending back. And I'm going to flip it over and we're going to start with the middle. I normally like to start with the middle and kind of work out. Because if we bend this, it gets harder and harder to go along. So middle one first, 90 degrees. And there we go, there's our piece manufactured. So, not too bad. A little bit complicated in the bending, but nothing too serious. So that's part four manufactured. So we're on to part five next. Uh, thanks for watching.